بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت بالله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله جميعا مي الله تبارك وتعالى bless us all with ikhlas with thabat and forgive us all of our many sins amin ya rabbil alamin a question was asked and this is a question or a comment related to uh, fitna and other issues the fitna of tabdi and the fitna of really it's a great fitna that we see arising from a lot of our youth and it's fueled by some of the du'at as well of uh, the lack of intolerance and intolerance in issues where there is room for disagreement and there is room uh, for a more broad perspective or variety of uh, opinions. And so this brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in him, he said, mashallah, I had a brother tell me that I was in a cult because I don't take from Tahir or uh, Mufti Munir. What minhaj is that? I mentioned Sheikh Saleh Fozan's kalam and he keeps talking about them. I mentioned the speech of Mukbil, Alabani, Bin Baz and the likes, and I get accused of being in a cult. Perhaps it's strictly projection. May Allah aid the people of the Sunnah. I mean, this fitness dividing the common folk. There are African Americans that blindly follow these two brothers while accusing those who do not to be in a cult or blind following, the likes of Rabia. It appears to be a propaganda campaign launched against the people of the Sunnah from the people of the umbrella. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and protect us all and preserve us all. Uh, what I want to comment about this comment is, uh, for one, my view is this, that if a person uh, is an English speaker and you refute, you don't like uh, Tahir, Sheikh Tahir and Sheikh uh, Muhammad uh, Munir or Mufti Munir, of course, that's your choice. My view is that you are missing out on a lot of benefits and a lot of why, but there are a lot of, mashallah, English speaking du'at and mashayikh in the UK, in America, in other countries that are have, have immense uh, benefit. Uh, that's just my personal opinion and my uh, humble opinion and from knowing those brothers and listening here and there to what they have to say and how they uh, conduct themselves and, and they're calling to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So that's my view. The second point, habit of Allah, is in general, it doesn't matter my view and it doesn't matter your view. It doesn't matter his or her view. In that, what I mean by that is people are so caught up into personalities so it's unfortunate some the people go to different extremes. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's Salafi publication, Salafi leaks, Salafi talk, Salafi this, Salafi that, uh, Yasser Qadi this, Nu'man, Ali Khan that, um, whoever. The whole per point is not to get caught up in personalities. And this is a problem with humanity, I believe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And, the, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Hizb shaitan and Hizb rahman I do believe Hizbiyah maybe is perhaps a natural inclination. We all want to be included in a group. We all want to um, adhere to something. And I think we have this innate na nature, according to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we, we want to worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for worship. We want to, to worship. And so what we've had throughout history is mankind has always looked for personalities. What is in front of them? We see the mushrikeen. They worship the sun. You know, the various types of mushrikeen. The trees, the sun, the moon, the stars. You know, minayati uh, you know, so people have a desire, an innate to desire. I think some of the people now, there's a trend where you find in the West people, you know, uh, probably more so amongst people, white people, um, Caucasian, and there's others too. It's not restricted, but because of class and you know, issues of race in the West and stuff like this, issues of position and power, you find a lot that are looking for 
spiritual spirituality. So there's a return to paganism, you know, and, and it's also a part of European heritage, some of the European heritage of going back to the Vikings and, you know, and even prior to that in the mythology. So they're intrigued by that. They want a place to worship. They don't know a Las Panatada. So they put that into, you know, it's a, it's a cultural thing. And then it's kind of a fad. And they actually, it's amazing how shirk and evil and wicked as it is and how that could be for people, they find a sense of belonging in that. And so what I want to mention is that there's a commonality that we want to be in a group. You want to be in a clique, whether it's a gang, whether it's this, whether it's a cult to find belonging. And we also find that we find that in Hezbia, you know, it could be a party affiliation. Look at how the people hate each other. This is in America being Democrat and Republican, and they claim to want to represent the people in their society under a so-called democratic system, and they oppose each other. They are they have enmity, you know, about certain issues. I mean, they will lie, they will cheat and do everything to support their his and really support themselves to keep themselves in power. And unfortunately, which which is so shameful, and I've been really observing this for so many years, is how Muslims take on board this the same type of Hezbiyah. It might not be the political Hezbiyah, even though we have that as well. But we really cling to our sects and our groups. We, you know, it's really a manifestation of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If ila akhir hadith, you know, the seventy-three sects. I mean, we, you know, we want that. You know, everybody wants to be in a clique. And I can remember when I first got introduced to Salafia. Of course, you know, it was kind of, it was semi Salafi publications, but it really an Abu Muslimist community. But it was really, I was blessed to go early on. You know, really a year into kind of adhering trying to learn about Salafi or what have you, going right to Damaj, you know. So it began really for me seeing things with Imam Muqbil and, and you know, and Sheikh Yahya Hujuri the, and, and stuff, because he was teaching more than Sheikh Muqbil. Sheikh Muqbil was very sick in those days. But it was that introduction in Yemen. So that was a great blessing. So for me, that was easy for me not to get caught up. I, I listened to, I never listened to Salafi publications, but I listened to, I, you know, I, the, back then it, the internet was new. And so it was their articles. It was Maktab Salafiyah or something like this. And they had a lot of uh, interesting articles that were being translated to the English population. So that was uh, sort of an introduction, Minhajiyah. But really, Alhamdulillah, I was getting it right from there in Yemen. So that was great. And freed me up from, you know, having to be locked in to individuals in the West. So... What I want to say is we have to learn to uh, to be able to respect legitimate differences. For example, the fact that you, this gives me an orientation towards you, the, the commenter, the one commenting on this YouTube, uh, you know, because I like Tahir, I respect him and I respect uh, Muhammad Munir. And actually Tahir, I would say, I don't know if I could say we're friends, but we are very, uh, you know, it's not like we, we would... We kick it. We could kick it, I think, if we were in the same city. But I, I respect him on so many different levels. And we have lately been in contact and stuff like this. And Mohammed Munir, I have the greatest uh, admiration for likewise. It doesn't mean everybody doesn't you see Buyukhti, like I do, like they do, like our, our imams do, like the imams of the Sunnah in the past. But they are Salafi. They're on the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, from my judgment, from what I see. And uh, regardless of whether your position you don't want to take from them or not, that doesn't bother me, and nor does it mean I have to convince you, nor does it mean I have to make ilzam. And that's the point of this video, is that people are so much, they, you have to agree with them. And that comes from all parties, like I'm seeing this rise of anti-Salafi publications hatred. It's gotten to such a level, as I saw the SP Leaks guy, you know, he made his comments, which is very beneficial. It's very beneficial because... I'm glad that I made a response to that. And I think that needs to be highlighted too, that people are so extreme in their hatred of those guys that they form almost a new hisp. And there's no doubt there are. I've seen it. We've seen it for years. I've seen people who are just armed together. They come together collectively to attack those guys. That's what their collective is. And that's a shame. That's, you know, they've really done what those guys have done. And that I don't really see them any better. Only that those guys at least claim their Salafi and at least they teach the books of the Sunnah, even if they have their own uh, ta'wil and objectives and you can go into their intention, you can go into this, you can go in that. But 
the bottom line is they also have, uh, uh, you know, ties with uh, Salafi Mashaikh, Mashaikh Ahlul Sunnati with Jamaat. So the point is, Ahabat you don't want to go from Hizb to Hizb. And this is exactly what the people of innovation did in the past. They would go from, for example, the, the people, the Murjia are sort of a reaction in a sense to the Khawarij, you know. The Khawarij are in the extreme, making take fear of people doing the major sins. The Murjia just say, hey, no, don't make it, you can never leave Islam unless you declare it and stuff. But I can do every kind of evil and it doesn't affect my Iman. So you see how they 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 went from one extreme to the other. The Ahl uh, Tashbi, you know, the people who make um, a likeness between Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His creation, they're on one extreme of the perspective. So the Ma'atila, the like the Ma'tazila and Jahmiya, go on another end of the perspective. They say, wait a minute, you guys are making resemblance between the Lord of the creation and his creation, you guys are disbelievers. So we're gonna run over here and do another bid'ah, go to the other extreme, we're just gonna negate the the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see how this has been a trend in the beginning uh, throughout the history of Islam with the sects arising. They go, they, they you know, the, even the Khawarij in their various sects, because Khawarij is not just one group. When you say someone is Khawarij, when you talk about the original, there's the Izarika, there's, you know, in general, they're called Hururiya from being from Hurura, I believe in Iraq. And you just have so many sects of the Khawarij. And they had different variations in their in their Aqidah. And Takfiruhum Ba'dhum in Ba'd. They made Takfir of one another, just like the modern day sects make Takfir of each other, but they also make Tibdi of each other. They're, you know, they, you know, just rush and, and do this. So Ahl Sunnah has always been ordered to be balanced. Be balanced, that's what Ahl Sunnah is. And that's what I'm trying to convey to the people is to be balanced. You know, you have to, you know, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. When you talk about Salafi publications, you know, that's fine. If that's what, you know, if you're doing it based on knowledge, not your desires, and you're bringing Dalil, you're bringing evidence from the book and the Sunnah of their mistakes and issues and, and, and personal experience. If you, you bring that, then Alhamdulillah, that's, that's fine. But, when it becomes, you begin to talk about, you know, things that are from the Tao of Ahl Sunnah, then of course we have to speak out against that. So that's where people go astray. You know, they go so extreme in their hatred. For example, you can't talk about Hamza Yusuf and his uh, Tasawwuf and stuff like this. And then you say, you know, and he's always talking about the five pillars of Islam. Well, the five pillars of Islam is Islam. So... You can't throw out that just because you dislike Hamza Yusuf. You know, you have to dislike his principles and what have you based on knowledge, based on evidences. You know, what is he doing that's a bid'ah? What, what are his mistakes and things like this that is distorting the religion and deceiving the people? You know, it needs to be based on knowledge, not desires. So I think we need to learn how to, we're going to have to cut this short. My phone's about to cut off. <laughs> so I just want to say that it's very important that we have to learn how to differ. And this is the menhaj of the Salaf, really. It really is. Um, and I invite you to read those many Salafi treaties. We'll talk about them. And a lot of them I've even te taught on my channel. Go to the Rifq, Rifq in uh, Ahl Sunnah. It's translated on Medina.com and other places, which is a treatise by Imam uh, Abdul Masin al Abad, get that. Nasiha, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, uh, Shadid Muhammad translated that. Very beneficial. Now, it doesn't mean anything is free from mistakes. Uh, people accuse it of mumayyir. They do this, but they don't. They just never bring the leal. We just haven't seen it really, especially Sheikh Ibrahim's treaties and Nasiha, and Sheikh. Uh, you know, and there's redud on it and so forth. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with a class with the bad and. And may Allah protect us from making awwal awwal bara based on individuals, personalities, cliques, cults, and sects, and new websites, whether it be SP or whether SP leaks or whether SP.com uh, or SP underline underscore leak, drainage, ditch, whatever it's called, then we don't want to make a his based upon it.